all right, well, we will have class uh, at that time. Uh, you might have classes at that time? Yes. Okay, it's, um, wow. Because on Sunday, uh, this one I'm off. This one I'm off. Uh, but uh, the matter is that during the other weeks, I have a previous commitment, you know, something that I do on Sunday because, you know, local time here. And uh, wow. Is there any other day other than this one you you think you may you may have available? Oh, sorry, I think you misunderstand my uh, my uh, yeah, my, my idea. Uh, I said that uh, I uh, I can have class on this Saturday. Oh, you say you can, all right? You're yes. able to. Okay, nice, nice, nice. So I didn't get you well. Anyway, thank you, We and sorry about the this uh you know back and forth is, is like you know it's been crazy you know this uh, holiday there in vietnam you know the time and i thought you told me this one to the to the sunday it makes me feel like <laughs> yeah but i can't understand most importantly most importantly i'm here yeah okay so we're gonna start the class from this moment on until uh the <clears throat> the duration of a class let me just yeah. open the lesson. And meanwhile, I'm opening, we, let me yeah. ask you something, all right? Okay. Uh, what What do you remember about our previous class? Yeah, about, about our previous class, we talked really much about jobs and aging networks. Okay, in our previous class, give me one second. My little puppy oh. wants to beat me. <laughs> hey, give me a second, we, my little puppy. She just went out. <laughs> it's a new puppy that my, my kids got, you know, and actually this one, when he sees me, uh, uh, she wants to bite me. Yeah. Give me a second. Okay, we let's get started with our refresh of the class. Let's remember, I uh, want you to tell me what we did before in our last class. Oh, sorry. Can you tell me what did we do before in our last class? Yeah, before in <clears throat> uh, about in our last class, we um like we read something something about jobs and um, talk talk about the uh, prepare preparation for the future, and also we do some exercise about agent names. That is correct. Especially uh, we categorize right. So the, the, this type of nouns, right? Uh, we talk about some jobs and that was pretty much in particular part of the content, all right? We covered before in our previous lesson. Now let me just open this material so we yeah. can get started with the new lesson as usual. So, and what about your weekend? Uh, what about your week? How was it? Yeah, I think it was a really boring week because um, so, I just stay I just stay home and watch TV and read books and then have online classes. Okay, didn't you have like something new there? Uh, considering that it was a holiday. Yeah, uh, that, although there was a holiday, but we can we, we couldn't enjoy it because, oh, because okay. of the COVID nineteen. Oh yeah, is it is still everybody's locked down there? Yes. Oh, but uh, I imagine you guys have the, the vaccine, right? Yeah, but just about um, one one uh, one of five one of five our population have the vaccines. Oh, only um especially a, a big portion of the population has the yes. vaccine. Yes, just really really uh, like small amount of people. Wow, that's that's complex, right? Because I imagine you guys might, you know, it's gonna 
it's gonna make it difficult for you guys, especially when you want to go out. What time is the lockdown there? So do you guys start from the morning, uh, from the afternoon? Mm, you know, uh, they, they didn't allow us to go outside when, uh, like all days. Oh, I do understand. Wow, that's terrible. That's it's not easy. I do understand yeah. that this is part of the process because, you know, caring of people. But, you know, since the pandemic is hitting, so most important is your life, guys. Most important yeah. way is your life. And then after that, the rest. So we'll be solving the process. So I can tell you here after the vaccination process, everything was under control. Yeah, there were people, some people infected, but, you know, it's kind of like everything is more controlled. And I've seen places where people are not using the mask. It's not recommendable not to you to wear the mask. It's not recommendable not to wear the mask because it's still I we have seen cases of people vaccinated, and uh, um, what's happened is they get infected by the COVID nineteen. But you know, people are people. <laughs> Sometimes they don't they don't care. Yeah. So let's get started with our new lesson, we. All right. So let's talk about that. Defining relative clauses, all right? Let's talk about that. This is very important to me, uh, especially, um, I'm gonna be talking to you about relative clauses. As you know, the relative clauses, they give us the, they give us the possibility to join a sentence. All right, and to better connect our ideas. So when you, we use the relative clauses, we may have the option to link, all right, subordinate clauses, which means one clause to another. So now we are going to start with this first exercise. All right, number one, read the test, okay? And then after that, uh, let me ask you this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you, or I would like you to tell me, who does Tommy Lynch work for? So oh. let's get it started. Let's analyze the, the context of a test. And then we are going to complete the exercise number two. The best job in the world seems to be a cruise line job. Yeah. Let's read. Okay. This is Tommy Lynch, a man whose job is to test water slides. <clears throat> Sorry. It's a job which almost every young person would love. He travels to holiday resorts, resorts which have water slides, has to go on them and reports back to the travel company where he works. There are a lot of people who would like Tommy Chuck, so his company can expect a lot of applications when he leaves. When he leaves. All right. So this is a, a very funny job. That's kind of like working in a, uh, well, actually that's working as, especially like in a water park, a ride or a attraction water park or resorts and things like that. You know, these kind of jobs are nice because a lot of people are having fun by the time you're working. That's really nice. I can tell you that because before years ago i used to work in that cruise line and i can tell you <laughs> that is nice be traveling the world traveling the world meeting people from all over the world and that's something nice so look at that so now we are going to what do you think about this job wait what is your opinion uh who does the tommy lynch uh who does the tommy lynch work for I think Tommy Lynch works for a travel company whose job is to test water slides. Okay, and what do you think about this type of jobs? What can you tell me? What's your opinion? Mm, I think this uh, this is like a um, well, it's like it's not like a job. It's like a game rather than a job. Okay. But some, but uh, it, it also uh, have some potential uh, hazard, like uh, the slide oh, can, yeah. be, uh, can, can have trouble every time. 
Okay, yeah, that, that may be a, a, a potential issue. Yeah, that's right. I really agree with your perspective. Yeah. That is correct. And especially something I consider there is with uh, people, you know, especially young people, all right? <laughs> Sometimes if there is something, an issue over there, up there especially, all right? People are scared, people emotions, you know, all that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there, there are people who has like you know, they may be frightened. They may be frightened because of the, because of the situation of being to the highest top of the, of a slide, and this is something that creates you know difficulties when you have these people like that. You are the person in charge, maybe of taking care of all this. Give me a second. Okay. Okay, let's continue. I'm sorry. Uh, let's, right. Now let's talk about uh, right, this relative clauses, uh, which are who, who's, where, and which. Uh, actually, they are in the test. Uh, we have we have them in the test of a of, on the test on the context of the test. So then we are going to complete the rules in the learn this box. So look at that. We use for things and animals. We use which for things and animals. Okay, so we use for people. We use who for people. That's right. We use for places. We use, uh, we use where for places. Okay, we use to indicate possession. We use whose to indicate possession. All right, I think this, this part of the lesson is easy. Okay, it's a piece of cake. So let's continue. So look at this. Actually, this, uh, this type of exercise, all right, this is a grammar builder, all right? So something I want to explain to you, all right, in regards to uh, the use of the relative pronouns or relative clause. So we have uh, the case of the clause who. In certain occasion, can be replaced by that. Uh, for example, uh, in certain occasion, in the in certain occasions, in the context of the conversation or a written statement, uh, you can refer to a person like, uh, "He's the boy. He's the boy that brought me a new a new car. He's the boy who bu who bought my new car." You can use yeah. who. Talking okay. uh, to the first, uh, talking about the person as a substitute of the relative clause that. All right. Yeah. In some of the cases, uh, you can use it like this. You can use it like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. She was the one. Uh, she was the one that was taking. Uh, that was taking picture. Okay. Yeah. She was the okay. one that was taking picture. In this particular case, you can use it as a, you know, like the relative clause to connect the idea of what you're trying to say. In this particular yeah. case, you are referring to that relative clause, especially when it comes to people. We have where, as you already told me before, and as we already know, that refers to places, which sometimes can be replaced by that but especially it is about things. And we have whose that is about position. Okay, and the thing is that okay. who or which can refer to the subject or object of a sentence. When they refer to the object, it's possible to omit or skip, all right? Who yeah. or which. Let's see this, let's see some examples. Okay, for the subject, can you read okay. it? Okay, she's the girl who works here. Okay, she's the girl who works here. But we have another case, another example, which is in regards of the object, all right? Oh. Can you read it? Okay, she's the girl who I met. All right, so here's the difference. The first one, it refers to the subject, all right? Yeah. 
Okay. It's making reference, right, to the subject. It means in this case, she's she's the girl who works here, all right? Yeah. Making emphasis, all right, on the girl that is working there, all right? Yeah. And the other one, she's the girl who I met. She's making, uh, especially in this sentence, it may, it's making emphasis, all right, on the event of meet and you know the, the, this meeting you know what i mean yeah okay so look at there so then we have another example all right so which is the object omitting the pronouns look at that okay Can you she's read the girl i saw on, on the bus she's the girl i saw on the bus all right in this particular case you don't have to use or you do not need to use their relative closet and I have I have had so many students and they wonder at first, I know it's not gonna be your case, but I have many students, especially lower levels, they ask me, teacher, but why do I have to escape or omit this, this relative clause? Is that correct? And yes, it's totally correct in English. What's yeah. happened is that this is what we call, this is what we call in English, hidden connection. Do you know what is a oh. hidden connection? Oh, okay, I understand. A hidden connection is just in case, um, just to let you know, hidden connection is what we well known as the link linkage of a of a, a subordinate clause with another one where a preposition is not shown. All right. Okay. This is what we call hidden connection. So then we have here another case we. We often use that. We often use that instead of which. We can also use that instead of instead of who. In what kind of English? In informal English. Informal English. All right. So let's see the examples. Okay. The example are uh, here's the book that you wanted. And did here's you see, the book that you wanted. Yeah. And did you see the guy that kissed Mary? Okay, so let's let's do something. Now I don't want you to do it informal. I want you to do a formal. How is that gonna be? Uh, did you see the guy who kissed Mary? That's right. Amazing job. Okay, I think you understand this very clear. Okay, so now let's do this. So we are going to choose the best clause. So so here we need to 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 choose the correct word. So number one. He's the police officer. He's the whose car, whose car. Okay, he's the police officer whose car was involved in the accident. Number two. He works in the department. Uh, wait, wait a minute. Where? Okay, so let's continue. The department which my aunt arrived is change of. So remember uh, that here that the reference is the, uh, the okay, let me just explain this to you. Do you remember before when I was talking to you about the object, not the subject? Yeah. The object here is going to be the department. She works in the department which, which? which my aunt, my aunt is, is in charge in of charge. what is the reference here is the aunt or the department it's the department <laughs> that is the reason okay therefore okay. therefore you will need to use which okay okay and let's imagine for example if you if you had been talking about, especially the aunt, my aunt is the is the person in charge of the the department. She's the one who, all right, or she's the okay. one, uh, which is in charge of which is in uh, for example, I'm say I'm using this one. So the idea is that here in this one is referring to the department as the object. Okay. Do you understand my point, we? Yeah. Okay, so let's go on. Number three, that's the okay. woman, all right? Who? We have who or whose? Who? 
Okay, that's the woman, okay, Ooh. who works, who works. A 60, oh my God, 60 okay. hours with good money. Wow. A lot, good money. Okay. She's gonna be broken, she's gonna be sick. <laughs> A lot yeah. of hours. Okay, Jenny is the IT consultant. Who, who fixed our who computers? Fixed our computers, that's right. Okay, number five, she's the woman. Who applied for the cleaning job? Who applied for the cleaning job, that's right. So number six, that's the building, that's the building site. Where my brother works. Where my brother works, that's right. Unskilled, unskilled work is work. Which, which, which requires no qualifications. Okay, so India is a place where a lot of call centers are located. Oof, yeah, a bunch. Bunch of contact centers there. Okay. Especially in Bangalore. I can tell you this because once before I was in a class and I remember I was teaching a book, I think it was level five, which is upper intermediate. And I was reading with my students, of course, they were reading something like that. So there are many, many, many contact centers in India. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. So now let's complete this test with who, who's, where, and which. A dream job. There, I want you to help me with that so we can complete the exercise. A dream job. It's a job. Okay, it is, it's a job which attracted 34,000 applications from around the world. Good. Every, okay. Everyone. Everyone who applied had to send in a 60 second video which explained why they wanted the job and what skill they had to offer. And what was this amazing job? Caretaker of Helmington Island is in the Great Barrier Reef. It's a place where it's sunny and warm all year round, and which has the most beautiful coral reefs in the world. The person, the person who got the job had to explore the island, islands, nearby and report back to the world about their experience. The 16 people whose videos most impressed the employers came to Australia for an interview. The lucky man who, who was finally chosen for the job was Bell Southam from the UK. Unfortunately for him, the job was only for six months. Okay, that's fine, fantastic. So let me just show you. Uh, there's something that uh, is very appealing here, we. Yeah. So as you see this, I can tell you, let's just go out of this context. The, uh, let's just go out of this test and let's talk about something general. Let's go ahead with some conversation. I know uh -huh. that is grammar. I can tell you this uh, because of my personal experience. Um, but let me ask you something. What do you think about this type of jobs, like working in an island, things that has to do with tourism and all that? What do you think about that? Yeah, I think I think it's a, like a really uh, interesting job where, when you can uh, like travel to a really famous place like the Great Barrier Reef to enjoy and see the most impress, impressive reef in the world. Okay, let me ask you something. That is your opinion. You may say, well, teacher Alexis, I think I, I never be there and I might have no idea, but let's see your imagination. Let me see your, let's go ahead with your critical thinking, all right? What do you think in your opinion? Maybe you don't know anything about that, but you can think about it. You may, you may have some ideas about that ever since you see the picture, right? So, and I'd like to ask you, uh, what do you think is going to be a, uh, or what do you think are going to be the great advantages of this type of jobs? Mm. Well, 
the most great the, the great advantages of the job, right? Yeah, what do you think in your opinion? What can be considered for you, especially in Wit's opinions, as an advantage of this? And maybe I would like you to tell me, what do you think it might be considered as a disadvantage? Oh, okay. I think the first one is that uh, you can travel to to the most one of the most famous famous uh, places in the world. And second, you can also have money. And finally, you can have some really great adventure in uh, in the near nearby islands. The way how you spoke sounds like somebody who were there. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe in the future you may be the doctor of one of these islands. All right. <laughs> so, okay, disadvantage for you, the wing. What do you think may be a disadvantage for you living in one of these islands? First one, I, I first of all, I think that uh, maybe I don't feel uh, homesick, but some people will feel like that. And then, and sometimes they can feel like they, they, they were, they are isolated. And uh, the next, the next one is that um, uh, I think it's the this job is uh, like lasts for not too long. It just for six months. Yeah, that's it's right. Not, that is not a stable job. That is correct. That 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 is correct. Actually, this uh, those are one of the main issues. Considering that may not be um, a stable job, many of these jobs they are because of the length of a contract, maybe six months, maybe eight, maybe four, it depends. Because usually by my times, when I used to be a cruise line worker, so usually the largest contract was around 11 months. Mine was 10 months and I extended to 11 months, but usually six months, seven months, things like that. Yeah, uh, yeah as you say, people may feel isolated, all right? people who like to have fun they don't even care <laughs> they just go there for fun and they live a funny life all right they don't yes. care about that and the the good advantage of this is that you save a lot of money yeah so people do not spend a lot of money they just have their savings in addition to this what else what else can i tell you uh one more thing is that this kind of jobs they have all their expenses cover, all right? Uh, usually the companies that hire these people or the staff, the team who works there on these uh, islands. So they cover all the things, medical things, pretty much just kind of like, you don't have to pay anything, even transportation fee. Yeah. That, is clean, that is clean money, all right? All right. So, that sounds good. This is the good part of it. All right. So let's continue here. So now we are going to have this. Well, let's go first with the exercise number four. Ask and answer. Ask and answer this question. And my question for you is the following. Which job would you like better? Tommy Lynch or Ben's soft hole? And I would like you to give me a reason. Uh, then after that, uh, well, the second question is, can you think of any other dream jobs? So that is for you. The second one, uh, we're going to make uh, more emphasis on the second question because I know it's more personal for you. So let me see the first one. What do you think about the first one? What's your opinion? I think that... Uh... I, I may prefer bad households, although it, it's not a stable job, but it's really interesting. That's just okay. my personal experience, uh, no, personal uh, like view. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, that's yeah, that's fine. That that is a that is a very good important point of uh very good important point. This is a, a good perspective. So now let's go ahead with the question number two. All right. Can you think yeah. of any other dream job? Is there any other dream job you can you say that? Wow, wow, teacher likes. I think my my preferred job or my dream job is this because certain reason and blah 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 blah. 
So I want you to tell me what's, what's your dream job? Well. There's always one that we feel, like, wow, I wanna be this and this because it allows me, for example, I can tell you, by the time I was, um, by that time, by that time, <laughs> By the time I was working there in the cruise line, I was like, wow, I want my dream job to be traveling the world. Then when I had when I had this one, then I say, oh, wow, now I want to be a teacher because I already travel. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what I mean? I don't know if you get my point. It's like now I want to be going because I was a teacher first and then I went to the cruise line uh, just for a few years and then I went back to my career because I wanted to have a, it's like you said, it's a, it's all about having a, a, a stable life. It's not like something that is stable in the sense of like sharing with your family, uh, having a normal life, you know, as anyone, as everybody else. So then I decided to go back to my career to teaching and I say, okay, my dream job now is going to be teaching because I love teaching and I like other people to learn new things and I like to share new knowledge. So in your case, what do you think maybe consider your dream job? Yeah, my, my dream job now is to be to become a doctor. To become yeah. a doctor. Yeah. Especially yeah, I, yeah go ahead. I'm sorry. Can, uh, yeah not a no no problem. Like, uh, it, it um maybe it cannot it uh it will be a like a stable job and I can also cure for every people and I love that. Yeah, you can help everyone, right? So through your help, so you uh actually there are two ages, all right, in yeah. this kind of job because number one you're helping everyone, so you save a life, and in addition to this. All right, it's a, it's a, a very stable job. Yes. So, well, so now let's complete this exercise. Number five, we are going to complete defining the relative clauses with who, where, which, and whose. Then we are going to write the word, uh, uh, we are going to write the word they are defining. So let's see, there you have the example, number one, Clothing, oh, which okay. nurses, police, of, police officers, soldiers, etc. Where? What is it? Obviously, it's in uniform. So let's see the other yeah. examples. A person. A person whose job is to look after the passengers on a plane. Passengers on a plane. Mm -hmm. Flight attendant. Flight attendant, that's right. Okay, a place. Where? Where a surgeon works. An idea. Hospital? Operating room. Ah, oh, operating. Okay, number four, a person. Who is in charge of a shop. Okay, who is in charge of a shop or an office. This person is. Oh. It's a manager. A person who is in charge of a shop or an office, that's the manager. All right. Okay. okay. So the money. Which you receive for a job. Which you receive for a job. And that is salary. Salary or wage. All right. Um, let's continue. Wage. Okay. A person. Whose place of work is a lab laboratory. Okay. A person who place of work is a lab. Scientist? Scientist, that's right. Okay, number seven, a place? Where workers answer for and give out information. Uh, what do you think it is? 
Thank you for calling I gems. This is to show Alexis. How may I help you? <laughs> Any idea? No, I know that, but I, I don't know that that word in English. It's call center. Oh, call center. Yeah, it's a call center. Okay. So look at that. On uh, number eight, a job. Which you do only for part of the time. Which you go only for part of the time. That is a part time job. Part time job. That's right. So I think I love the part time jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Being honest, I can tell you, I can tell you this way. I love more part time jobs than full time jobs. Yeah, like you, you can have some, uh, lots of rest. Yeah, that's you right. You can also get salary. Yeah, that's right. I love them. Obviously, it's not the same remuneration, but it's nice. It's like you have freedom to do so many things. Yeah. Okay, so look at this. Let's talk about the lookout, all right? So now we're going to read this short lookout, this short lookout box in which, and then I would like you to tell me in which mm -hmm. sentence, all right, in exercise five, could you use that? Look at there. So first, it's very important to tell you, all right? We often use yeah. that instead of which. I mentioned this before. In informal yeah. English, we, um, in informal English, all right, we can also yeah. use that instead of who. Okay. So that is something very relevant to know, to let you know. Because, you know, we usually speak more English than what we write, you know? Or maybe we usually we speak more everyday English than what we're gonna talk to, you know, like people maybe at the academy. Well, actually, this is I'm considering this, especially living in an English or being in an English speaking country, any other English speaking country, New Zealand, UK. So they are gonna use more informal English. Well, I imagine. If this is the case here in America, if you go if you go around all around, maybe to the subway station, the bus stop, so everyone is going to take is going to be like speaking in formal English. Hey, how are you doing? So and you know it's going to be like talking like everyday everyday speech, other than the formal speech as we have here in in the books. You know what I mean? Yes. So, and then that's the reason I'm, I'm telling you this. So look at this. So let's do, let's do this exercise. In which sentences in exercise number five could you use that? Let's go backwards. Which of this can be substituted by that? Then the first one. The first uh, one. Uh, the fifth one. Fifth. And and the final one. Okay, number eight. The eighth one, right? Yeah. Sounds good. Fantastic. You did an amazing job. So now let's read this. Learn this box. So looking at the exercise one and three, and then after that, the question for you is: Where do we place the relative clauses in the sentence? Would you mind reading this, learn this box? Defining okay. relative clauses, let's see. Okay, a defining relative clause comes immediately after a noun and tells us which person, thing, or place we are talking about. It can be in the middle or at the end of the sentence. So we do not put a comma before the clause. Um, okay, the examples are she's, she's the nurse, who looked after my brother, my mother. My mother. And the farm, the farm where cousins pick fruits is, is, is enormous. <laughs> okay, that so, thing, uh, actually, in my opinion, I think that's is self-explanatory. That's very explicit. That's very, very understandable. So then, so the examples, uh, the examples you have there, she's the nurse who looked after my mother the farm where my cousin picks fruits is enormous, all right? So it's yeah. like uh, there you have this 
define this relative clause, all right? Where you just connect the idea easily, arrive with less complication. And uh, let me just tell you something, Ray. In many, many, many occasions, all right? A bunch of occasions, I have so many students, all right, who ask me, teacher, what is, what is most recommendable to use the formal wave um, even we use the relative clauses or being more informal. And like I said, um, what I can tell you is that it depends on the content. If you understand that you're gonna talk to people, maybe it's not the same like talking in a, all right, in a context, all right, in a, in a lecture, I'm sorry. It's not the same being talking in a lecture before a big audience, like talking between you and I, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or oh, it's not the same like talking to a public where an audience where there are doctors, architects, a lot of professionals, mm -hmm. or talking to my friend. You know what I mean? Yes. So obviously, because of the context, you will be forced to use what is best convenient for you as a good English speaker. So the first thing we need to consider is the uh, transmission, transmission of ideas, the way how uh, the context of the application, are you talking in an informal context? What is a formal context to you? Where there is a technical, con uh, where there is a technical setting in which you are required to use a formal speech. Or maybe uh, you're gonna be using the context where no formality sakes are required. You just use the language, you know what I mean? Okay. So, and that's pretty much what, 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 I, what I want to, to say. So we, let's continue. Let me ask you uh, another question real quick. I know we're about to finish this part. So look at this. So what do you think about using relative classes, all right, in the context of uh, informal or formal conversation? What do you think about that? What can you tell me? Yeah, I can tell you uh, is that, uh... Well, uh, we, uh, we, when we use, um, how to use um, uh, formal and informal English is depend on the, uh, like the, um, the way we not, we understand that and uh, the, um, well, what should I say that? Um, Uh, what do you think, like, uh, considering the context, whether to be formal yes. or informal? Yes. Another and, uh, question. It also, de it oh, also depends sorry. on the, no, okay. Uh, it also depends on the person that we talk with. That is right. That is totally correct. One more question. What do you think about skipping, all right, omitting a relative clause? Is it formal yeah, that, or informal? I think that is uh, maybe informal because it's, um, it's like uh, like it's uh, make it's uh, make us feel more convenient when we talk and like more feel, feel more free. Okay, it's, it gives you more freedom when you speak. It's yeah. like being a uh, it's like being it's kind of like being a fish into the water. <laughs> <laughs> something like that that's the way how you feel especially considering that you are speaking a second language so look at that we're gonna take turns now to define the words below so you're gonna choose all the words relating to the world of work so look at there so here we have this example these examples it's a person who who's is something which it's a place where we're gonna use some of them. Not necessarily we are going to use all of them. I don't think we need to use all of them. So, but I would like you to use at least three of them to complete these three examples or just those three patterns. Mm. Okay. It's a person. Uh, yeah, first I, I, I think I will talk about the person first. Okay, let uh, me see. Okay. Uh, a nurse is a person who job who job is to take care of uh, her patient. 
Do you say who or whose? Who, who, whose, 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 yeah. whose. <laughs> okay, let me see. Can you do it with who now? Okay. Uh, um, an electric, an electrician is the person who fixes the electric wire. 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 That's right. Okay. Something. Okay. It's something which. Let me see what you do there with it. Mm. Okay. Uh, a salary is something which we earn from our work. Okay, salary is something we get from our, we, we earn from our yeah. work, all right? Especially our working hours. Okay, yeah. it's a place where, let me see what you do there. Okay, a hotel is a place where we, uh, where we uh, stay at when, when we are not able to go home. Okay, fantastic. So finally to wrap up, we can you tell me what did we learn today? I want you to tell me three very important things, like the three most important things in your opinion we learned in this class. Okay, the, uh, today in uh, our uh, class we talk about defining relative clause. It uh, rules some some of it rules it it role in a sentence and the place in the sentence and now. Uh, when, when, uh, when we can use that and uh, who or which. And finally, we talk about where is defining relative clauses should be put. Fantastic, fantastic, that is correct. Well, we, I think you did an amazing job. That is undescriptable. <laughs> what you've been doing today is an example that you really understand the lesson. And especially, I think the topic was very, uh, was, was easy. Uh, something easy to handle. Then let's talk about homework. Then I would okay. like you to talk about, let me see. So I would like you to talk about or, or explain to me, all right? You can make a summary, a little summary, only two paragraphs, all right? About uncommon jobs, all right? I want you to, that is going to be your homework, to write about an uncommon job. So you can talk about any type of uncommon job. Maybe something that I don't even know. So, for example, I don't know. I'm going to tell you some uncommon jobs. For example, food tester. For example, dog walker. For, exa for example, let me see. Mirror salesman. <laughs> uncommon jobs. So, I want you to talk about that. I want you to tell me uh, what is that about? What do, uh, what do they do? But in the context of this conversation, I want you to use at least three relative clauses. Okay. For example, okay, okay you're going to be talking about, okay, uh, let's say food tester. I think a food tester is a person that is working at the kitchen, but he's not a common employee. He's not like a common cook or something like that. He's only there. He's only there to taste the food. Then after what? After that, he eat, he tries a lot of food, but he doesn't, he, he doesn't get extra pound. He's all the time like that. He's thin. I don't know if you've seen these people. They eat a lot of food. They have to try a lot of food, but they do not grow big. Wow. <laughs> then you're going to use your ideas. But in the context, you're going to say that is the person that whose responsibility, you know, you're going to connect the relative classes with your ex, uh, exposition. Okay. And one more thing in order to wrap up we one more thing. I would like you to uh -huh. tell me, I want you to tell me uh, for tomorrow, uh, are you going to take the class tomorrow or is going to be that after the next week? Mm, let me see uh, tomorrow. Uh, you well, took, well, I think. well, you took the and class. Yeah, because you took two hours class this week, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, but uh, that means that you're going to do it next week, right? Okay, okay. Yeah, because I, I'm just going to write it in my agenda. You know, I'm having <laughs> so <laughs> many things. It's overwhelming, all right? Just to make sure, you yeah. know? So okay. anyway, we that's going to be um, Fridays and Saturday, right? Yes. Fantastic. Okay, any potential changes, we just talk and then we organize it, right?
Wow. Uh, no, I was saying that any potential change or anything, you, we just talk and then we organize it. There's no problem with it. Yeah. No okay, wait. Anyway, thank you so much for your time. I wish you a fantastic rest of the, well, evening. And see you yeah, next class. <laughs> yeah, see you next class. And have a good morning. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.